a good teacher. Um, I always think immediately, you know, I, when I met you, you were working um, at Kids College at Barry at the after school program in the elementary school. And um, I just remember um, like you immediately, I feel like you just connected really well with the kids and you're really sensitive to and like all their different personalities and um, like I remember um, you playing with a group of kids and there was one girl kind of off to the side and you went to her intentionally and was like okay now I want to play with you and so I feel like you're really good at connecting with kids and meeting them where they are and then figuring out what's interesting and important to them and using that as a springboard to really um, kind of spark their curiosity and their um, I guess their like interest in learning. I mean, other things that I see in you, I see that you don't give up easily um, when things are hard. And in fact, I think that you really prefer things to be challenging. Not that you want them to be hard or insurmountable, but you like, you know, a challenge. You like figuring out something that's complex. One thing that makes you an excellent teacher is that you're really good at um, explaining ideas in a way that makes sense. Um, and I think you're really good at taking the other person's perspective and you don't assume that they have any knowledge that they don't you know, already have. And you can break things down in a way that's really um, like makes sense and it's accessible and it's easy for them to understand. But at the same time, you can do that without talking down to someone and I've seen you do that with you know kids all the way um, through adults and I had one last thing okay. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> and um, you also are not afraid to be silly with uh, your students and so you know I see you singing songs and dancing and making jokes with them and laughing around laughing with them and I think that's so important. I feel like people often have interests kind of in one area or another, but I think that um, yours are more broad. And I think that that um, is something really cool that you can bring to your classroom. Um, that, you know, you have that side of you that loves science just as much as um, music and being creative. Take into consideration your um, students' social and emotional growth. And um, you, I see you prioritizing that as much as um, other areas of um, development, and I think that's really important. Nói với nó là là một ngoại muốn nó là một người liên minh công chính là một yeah. chuyện. Yeah. Dạy học trò về giáo dục hoàn toàn đối với cha mẹ. Hmm. Nha. Dạ. Mà phải nghĩ. Liên minh công chính là... Liên minh công chính như là minh công đàng chính. hoàng đừng có tham nhũng. Dạ. Yeah. Ok. Đừng có tham nhũng. Mà cái gì cũng phải cho rõ ràng cái đừng có nấu quanh co, ừ. nó lao, nó sượt, nó bị... À. Mấy cái đó là con nói thì nó sao con nói và cái ý bà ngoại là vậy. À, dạ. Yeah. Uh, bà ngoại thinks that uh, you... Has um, a lot of time we talk about this briefly. Um, um, how your mother, your mother um, was a um, a good example. She instilled in you um, one of the key thing is uh, to uh, uh, be a good person. She thinks that this is very important um, that to have a good heart. Um, because uh, to be a, a good teacher, um, you must teach the children uh, to do the right thing. Um, um, so I think Bang Wai say that um, when you do with your heart, with your passion, um, things will be, you know, uh, great. You love uh, your uh, student as if they your own, uh, um, so as if they your own children. Uh, that's what we all teachers should do. We yeah, called you Smo. Did you know we called you Smo? What was that? It was just what we called you. What does that mean? It, it was just a sweet thing that we always <laughs> called you. Was Smo? You didn't know that. <laughs> 
Yep. Yeah. And we'd say, oh, Smell's coming! <laughs> <laughs> yep. Yeah. You and I bonded from the first time we met. I don't know why, but I think you saw the insanity. <laughs> yeah. We went, we'll have a good time together. Christopher is sweet. He's compassionate. He's knowledgeable. He's patient. <laughs> he um, is calm. And I would think you'd have to have all of that to work with children. We have two nephews. One is not calm. <laughs> Kind of crazy and throws tam temper tantrums and then we have Christopher. Always a, a, a pleasure to be around and um, easygoing, goes with the flow. And I think you would get along with any kind of people. Help the troubled. Uh, well, I actually think that the, the best teachers uh, are people who enjoy learning. Um, so when it comes to people like yourself, I remember a, as a kid, you know, you would, you would enjoy like collecting and studying insects, you know, just to, to learn about insects. And, uh, I remember when you taught yourself, uh, how to, you know, write and produce and record your own music. Um, yeah, I remember you teaching yourself, uh, how to like build computers, you know, on your own. So, um, I think that, that because you have such a drive and a passion to learn yourself, you'll do a good job passing that on to your students. I would find you to be very innovative. You definitely think outside the box, but in a very good way. So that gives a very uh, refreshing, um, fresh new viewpoint on how to approach a certain way to, uh, to teach other people, other children, how to do things. Even keeled, even tempered, calm. Um, I don't know if that represents patience, but I, the, uh, I, the, uh, I, I think it bears a relationship with patience. So, yeah, that's that's the thing that uh, that strikes me. Um, knowing how much of a troublemaker you were when you were younger, and you can edit this part out. If you want. <laughs> but yeah, um, that's I. I and it, I'm not the only one who thinks that in the family. That, that stands out now. I think uh, Chris is a very mild-tempered young man. And he is patient, the, can lead, the, he can be a great, good teacher and make the kids listen to, to, to his um, quietness and mild temper manner. Just off the top of my head, I would say two things. Um, first of all, I think you're extremely relatable. Um, just in conversation with you or observing you um, in conversation with other people, I think everyone's very at ease around you for the most part. Um, and if someone brings up a topic that maybe you know something about, then typically you can, um, you have something to add to that and say, oh yeah, I've seen something about that and at least get them on a roll. Um, people enjoy talking about something that they're interested in. I think you do a good job of letting people do that. Or if it's something that you don't know much about, you're willing to admit that and say, you know, I don't really know what that is, tell me more. Um, so being able to do that, especially in teaching, I think is extremely important um, just because people are at ease around you. And then uh, the second thing I would say is I think you're a really great role model for kids. I think the person who you are in front of them or in the classroom is who you are all the time, which is huge. I don't think you have to try to be a teacher. Um, I think just your natural personality and mannerisms, um, you know, kids are gonna respond to you well and uh, or will, will serve you well. Well, the first thing that struck me about your teaching abilities is that I never got the feeling that you were teaching you, you were actually participating in the learning process with the student. And we had a saying in professional school, see one, do one, teach one. And in your case, every time you've ever worked with me as a teacher, quote unquote, I always felt like that you were learning with me and you never talked down to me and you got excited about just like you were learning it for the first time. It was not old hat. And uh, 
we just had fun together and you made it fun and it was obvious that I was interested in it and you were interested in it for the sake of my being interested in it and we learned together that was the feeling that I got with you very natural process I don't think that you will ever be bound by convention whether it be in education or, or any other pursuit that you might uh, become interested in and while you've got a respect for what's gone before, I don't think you're bound by it. And I, I see you as a sort of an iconoclast. So I see you coming up with new ideas, new ways, better, building on the old, but always improving. And that's gonna be the case with you, whether you stay in education, whether you become an entrepreneur, which you also sense an entrepreneurial uh, uh, spirit in you, I guess is what I would call it. And, uh, I, I, I guess in a nutshell, I don't see you standing in one place ever, always progressing. She say that if you are uh, do true to your heart, you will uh, always be very successful. You, I think you'll still be, um, I think you'll still be teaching. Because I know that's something you're really passionate about, and it's something that you really enjoy now. Um, it might be maybe you'll be teaching, um, you know, you'll still be teaching in kind of the capacity that you are now at a more progressive school, or you may at that point have your own um, maker school and have a huge workshop. And um, you know, I can imagine you having all kinds of classes and adventures and. Um, making things with kids and um, you know having workshops with adults too um, so I can see you doing something like that or you know I also can imagine that um, you know maybe your interests will have grown in a completely not in a different direction but have branched off into another direction that we you know don't even foresee now I think that's something that's really cool about you is that I think you're you know, always growing and, you know, always open to learning new things. In 10 years, uh, that's a really difficult question. It, it's probably impossible to, to predict, but if I had to guess, um, kind of going back to the, to the first question is, um, I really see you in a position where you're still teaching other people. Uh, and again, it could be anything from electronics to anything like what you're doing now with, uh, with math and that sort of thing. Um, I feel like you're always, you will always be in a position to pass on knowledge to other people. In 10 years, I see yourself uh, still uh, uh, practicing the art of teaching, but at the same time, I, I see in 10 years you could also be uh, in administration, uh, actually overseeing other people uh, carry out the same type of philosophy of teaching that the brand of teaching that you want to instill onto others. I see you tinkering in 10 years because uh, I, I, I've been seeing that over the years. Um, what with your interest in um, in website construction and then with um, with 3D printing, and then from the kind of, of associations or acquaintances that that you've created or talked about, or when I look at Facebook, the stuff that you talk about, um, I, I I think you have curiosity, and that's a good thing, um, and you follow through on your cu curiosity. I don't really know. I know he will be making a difference in people's lives in some way, whether it be children or grown-ups. I'm not sure, but as long as he's happy, no matter what he's doing, I would be proud of him. Well, that's really hard because 10 years is a pretty long time. Um, I do see you, maybe not exactly 10 years, but at some point between now and 10 years from now. Um, whether it's a nonprofit or an online business, I do see you getting involved in a startup of some kind. I know we've kind of kicked around um, the idea of doing like a Kickstarter or some kind of project. And I don't know if that would have to do with kids or not, or most likely it would, just because that's what you're passionate about and what you're interested in. Um, but I do see you getting involved in a startup of some kind, uh, which I think would be really cool um, if you did that. I think you'd be successful.